Hi, I'm, I'm Dave Boyd, Potter Shop Hollow Tree Farm and Portable Sawmill, and I'm over at Ozark Sawmill Services down in beautiful Fox, Arkansas, where uh, where Wayne Jordan and uh, his brother-in-law, Tim Cummings, have set up a Norwood HD 38 sawmill, and they've got a going business, uh, or I should say a growing business, uh, cutting lumber, and we're just going to talk to them a little bit and watch them cut some lumber. So, Wayne, I guess you're kind of the business manager of the Maybe system, or how yeah. you're... Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and, and you're head sawyer, yeah. maintenance man. Tree cutter. Tree cutter, <laughs> fellow with the broom. <laughs> and this is this is the ultimate Norwood sawmill. It's the HD38 Max, and it's got hydraulics on it. And how long have you had this uh, Norwood mill? Maybe May, okay. April. Right? I think it was April. Yeah. Like it. Yeah, it may have been. So you got maybe four months of milling time on it now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, yeah. 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 The as you get older too, the the more you can change things to equipment or hydraulics or anything that makes the job easier um, saves your body. Yeah. That's all I can tell you because as time goes by, this, this oh, yeah. I, I, I like watching these guys on YouTube that uh, have all these manual stuff and uh, say, well, this guy's probably 25 or 30 years old. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I, I want to see him in 20 years yeah. when he's doing that because sure. it will take a toll on you. I started getting into sawmilling just with a smaller type sawmill and uh, it was just really getting time for an upgrade. It was just time to build production and, and be able to handle some bigger logs and within the 30 uh, inch range and bigger, but trying to build the whole aspect of from getting the logs to be able to mill them, to dry them, and then to even process them to however you want to sell them. And uh, so that's has turned into a business where to do business at that level, you need a decent sawmill. So it become the, the one for us. But yes, it's met every expectation, and we're happy with it. Well, our business plan is for a full-time business. Yes, we've written up a whole business plan, and um, we felt feel like it's very profitable uh, for us by um, anywhere from six months to twelve month timeline. That's my job. <laughs> the selling of the business part. <laughs> I just got either gotta keep up with when I start selling, can we keep up with the production? <laughs> first few logs are fun, you know, going back and forth, yep. but after a while it gets a little monotonous on the going back and forth, especially if you're sawing half inch. And um, so I think I think at the ne if next level would be to add the uh, computer, the set work, yeah, the, with the power feed. You got to be doing a lot of production to justify it. We're, that's where we're trying to get to, yeah. I think it'll make for a decent project for someone. <laughs> Very nice. This so is pretty wood. Good. I don't want to get wet. I guess I'm gonna have to. <clears throat> you can't just saw up what you want because yeah. you think it looks good. You gotta now think about who am I gonna sell this to? It's gonna, you know, the wholesale side is definitely. Um, uh, profitable um, side of the business. Of course, then becomes the other issue we all have, is trying to figure out what people want. <laughs> so, you know, we can't just cut up wood and yeah. then put it in inventory. <laughs> 
Uh, well, and the other, out. the other thing is I'm trying to um, get with is woodworkers, and uh -huh. I've started talking to a few of them, and um, so you know it's a larger orders, but it also takes a little longer to get into those places. How do you pr promote your, your business to where customers can find you, and how did Tim find you? Well, that was interesting. I, we have a few what they call country stores, you know, and that's where everybody congregates, you know, to have lunch and stuff during the day, and because <clears throat> we don't have a lot of stores around in these areas. And uh, so I put some business cards, you know, on the ta general table where people sit and stuff. And and he called me up a couple of weeks ago and said, "Hey, I found your card here, and I want to I want to come down. I'm in Fox right now." I said, "You're in Fox?" <laughs> I'm like, "Really?" <laughs> and uh, so he came down and bought some uh, lumber, and uh, then we cut some more up for him. And then he came back and got it, and he was really impressed with it. And he said, "Well, I want to buy some more." <laughs> and uh, so we came down and we cut it up last week for him, and he came down and got it. And uh, and he's going to bring us another customer. So those are the kind of customers right, you like. Yeah. Tim. Hi, right, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. You do some work on social media as well. I know you post YouTube videos, which are really? excellent. I really enjoy following those. We'll see if we can get a link to uh, your YouTube channel <coughs> when we post this as well. But uh, so, what what do you do along those lines? Marketplace on um, Facebook, I put um, um, a couple of things on there, and I've gotten some inquiries on it. As far as um, our website. I get calls at least once or twice a week. Very productive as far as the number of calls and stuff. And of course, anything coming off a sawmill green is not worth as much as anything that's gotten pr production of or, or finishing at right. different stages. Okay, and I most of the time, guys, and this is the problem with pricing is trying to come up with that whole thing because each process has its own pricing, I got and then building that into a total price of what the end product is going to cost okay. and that's that is you know it depends on your market too sure. like when we're in a rural area here is a lot less than um, if you're living up north in a high population area right of what you can get for it so yeah I've come up with a formula plan pretty say okay this is what the price is going to be when it comes out the mill for depending on the species the cut the width all that kind of stuff and then how much you're going to get a board foot when you put it in the kiln yeah. uh, say I've seen the pricing on kilns anywhere from a dollar to two dollars a board foot to add on to the cost like I said now you add all that together you should have the price of a piece of wood at the end right until somebody comes and says okay I'll give you this for it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which then throws all that theory out the door because then it really comes down to what you and I can agree to right. on how much you want to pay for it. To me, it seems like that is the one biggest failing of people that go into the sawmilling business is they get out there, you know, they love cutting wood. And they'll, you know, they get some nice logs and they get pretty decent log pile and say, oh, I got to dry it, sell it, I got to keep the accounting of it. And we'd say the business end of it is. Uh, uh, about as challenging as the sawing itself. Yeah, it's a full-time job. That's why. That's why the guys that do it by themselves. Yeah. Uh, and and I don't see that they may have help, but if they don't, I find it very impressive that they do it all by themselves. Yeah. And so, um, you got. I, I'll tell you because that side of it just as much um, effort as the sawmilling side. Yeah. Well, any other comments that you're going to? Ask? To somebody maybe is interested in getting started in something like this, and just it's just kind of an idea that's going around in their head. What kind of advice would you give them? Other than if you're around Fox, don't. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> uh, I'll advise you, you as long as you're not in my competition. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, uh, expect to take it twice as long and twice as much money. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> than whatever you think. Yeah. And if you think, if you think this is good enough, go the next step up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good point. I've never talked to anybody that wished they had a smaller mill. Right. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this mill is too big. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Yeah, whatever you got, you're going to push it to the absolute maximum it can handle sooner or later. Yeah. Well, there's just a lot involved. I mean, it, it's great. It's an awesome hobby. Yeah. And if you want to make it a business, which is definitely doable because it's been done over and over and again, but there's just a lot with equipment. And, you know, our biggest struggle now is we need a piece of equipment that can move these logs around. And so there's always, there's, you know, like Wayne said, there's there's more to the yeah. cost than just getting a mill and, yeah. start, and start the mill. Well, yeah, he, he did come up with a new thing he wants, What's which that? is being able to run the sawmill from the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs>